So we are continuing with a series on the armor of God today by learning about the belt of truth. We started with the introduction last week where we learn how Satan prowls around like a roaring lion. always looking for something to devour. Well, what does looking for something to devour mean? It means he and his army of demon helpers are always looking for opportunity to attack our minds, our thinking, or to trick us so that we don't do what God tells us to do. Satan hates God and wants us to stop following God by trying to get us to sin. We are most vulnerable to Satan's attacks when we are afraid or angry. And how do we defend ourselves from Satan's attacks? How do we protect ourselves? The Bible tells us in the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 13 to 17, to put on the full armor of God. I'm going to read it. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your, gr stand your ground. And after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the sword, the word of God. So I'm going to share a little bit about the background for the book of Ephesians. So the passage we just read from the book of Ephesians is from the New Testament. It was not originally written as a book, but as a very long letter. The Apostle Paul wrote it to the Christians in the city of Ephesus, which is located in modern day Turkey. At the time, Jews who opposed Paul got him arrested while he was in Jerusalem. He was then sent to Rome and imprisoned for two years while he waited for trial. It was during this time that Paul wrote this letter to encourage the Christians in Ephesus. So you can see, right, he was here, you see my cursor, Jerusalem is here, and then he had to go by boat all the way over here to Rome. And that's a 2000 mile journey that took him a really long time. And I just wanna point out that Ephesus is right here. Okay, so, okay, next slide. You can imagine how Paul probably saw Roman soldiers in their full armor every day as they guarded him. Maybe that's what inspired Paul to use armor to illustrate our defenses against Satan's attacks. According to the Ephesians passage, the first piece of armor we read about is the belt of truth buckled around your waist. Now, why is the belt of truth so important that it is listed first out of the six pieces of armor? Let's see, belt of truth, and it's right here. So we're gonna watch a video now to learn more about the belt of truth. In the Bible, there's a true story about Adam and Eve. Let me see you wave hello to Adam and Eve. Great job. Adam and Eve lived in God's special garden called the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve were friends with God and he gave them everything they needed, including lots of yummy fruit from trees in the garden. There was only one tree that God said they were not allowed to eat from. Now, there was also a tricky snake in the garden. Friends, let me hear you hiss like a snake. You sound just like a snake. Well, this snake was not like snakes we might see slither across the construction site. This snake could talk, and it was Adam and Eve's enemy. One day, it asked Eve, did God really say you must not eat fruit from any tree in the garden? Eve told the snake that God said they could eat from all the trees except one. The snake was trying to trick Eve by telling her a lie. He told her that she could eat from this tree. 
The snake wanted Eve to forget what God had said so that she would do what was wrong. Boys and girls, do you think that Eve should eat the fruit from this special tree? No! No way! But the fruit on the tree did look very yummy. Eve thought about what God had said, but she decided to believe the lie of the tricky snake, so she ate the fruit. Eve also gave some of the fruit to her husband, Adam, who was with her, and he ate it too. Boys and girls, was believing the enemy's lie the right thing or the wrong thing for Adam and Eve to do? The wrong thing! You got it! Because they believed the lie of their enemy and not the true words of God, Adam and Eve had to leave God's special garden. You see, Adam and Eve did not have on their belt of truth. The belt of truth helps us remember the true things that God tells us in the Bible. If they would have put on the belt of truth, they would have known the snake was being tricky by telling lies. Every time we put on God's armor, we have the power to be an everyday hero. And when we put on the belt of truth, we can remember God's truth and stand strong against any lies or tricks. So let me hear you say this after me. Put on, put on the belt of truth. The belt of truth. You've got it. When you put on all of God's armor and pray, you'll be strong enough to stand up to any evil that comes your way. So the belt of truth is the most important piece of armor we can wear because it is the foundation that supports the other pieces of armor. So you can see how the belt right here is holding up the tunic, keeping it tight because it's kind of floppy. And it actually, if the tunic is too long, they can pull this part up a little bit and let it hang over so that you know their, their feet, their legs don't get caught on it. Truth is the foundation that gives us a strong, solid base to build everything else on. You can see how all the other pieces of armor go on after the belt. It keeps us from getting confused and thrown off track. God's truth is the foundation that helps us so that we don't believe in Satan's lies. The belt of truth prepares the Christian for action. Now, one of the many names Satan has is the father of lies. In the book of John, chapter 8, verse 44, it says, and this is what Jesus says about Satan, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. As Joanna taught us last week, Satan lies to us about God, and he lies to us about ourselves. He also twists God's truth into half truths. Half the truth is still a lie. Satan is very sneaky. When he lies, he hides it behind half truths. He mixes truth in with his lies. He adds enough truth to make the lie believable. The only way we recognize something is a lie is by knowing what the whole truth is. Now, remember I asked you guys to Bring a $20 bill. If you have it, you can take it out now and take a look at it. Okay. For example, how do you know the $20 bill you have is real or fake? For you to know that you have, for you to know that you have a fake bill, you first have to know what the real bill looks like, right? Because if the detail in the bill that you have in your hand doesn't match what you know is the real 20, what a real $20 bill would have, then you've got yourself a fake bill which is also called a counterfeit. Okay, so I'm gonna do a little exercise here. Okay. <laughs> so, what do you think? Are these real or fake? Fake! Fake, it's fake. And how do you know? Now, would you know that these are fake if you've never seen a real $10 bill? Probably not. Right, so I'm gonna show you side by side that with the real, 20, real $10 bill, right? So we could see that the portrait on a real bill is of Alexander Hamilton, not Yoda, not Princess Leia. <laughs> and we can also see that at the bottom, it says it spells out $10, you know, not, I don't know, different other words. 
Okay, so because we have to know what the real one looks like so that when we see a fake, we can spot it. You know, you could see here that the counterfeit can look almost exactly like the real thing, almost. The difference between the genuine and a counterfeit can be just one detail. One detail can be the difference between a truth and a lie. We need to know God's truth so that we can spot Satan's lies. And where do we get God's truth? From the Bible. Because in the book of John, chapter 17, verse 17, it says, your word is truth. God's word, God's truth is written in the Bible. The Bible is the true word of God. Without God's truth, we are lost. Without God's truth, we are vulnerable to Satan's lies. God's truth protects us against the temptation and self-doubt. Every time we read the Bible, we learn more about God through the stories about him and his relationship with his people, the Israelites. Every time we learn more about God, we strengthen the armor we put on. To put on the full armor of God is to put your full trust in God and what he says in the Bible. It means you value God's truth more than the lies of the deceiver. You put on the belt of truth when you say, I'm not trusting in the lies of the enemy. I believe all that the Bible says about what Jesus did for me. Now, an example of one lie we might believe when, we've, when we're faced with a challenge is, I can't do this. It's too hard. But the Bible tells us the truth. In the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verse 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Another example of a lie we might believe is I'm ugly. Or I'm just not good enough. But the Bible tells us the truth in the book of Psalm, chapter 139, verse 14. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. So here are some examples of God's truths about our identity, and I'd like us to read this together. Start. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. Okay, let's do it together. I made, I am made in God's image. Okay, let's say together. <laughs> in God's image. image. Next one. Together. I am loved. Okay, let's do it together. <laughs> I am loved. Okay. Oh, good. Next one. I am forgiven. Let's do it together. Uh, I am uh, forgiven. Uh, Next one. I am not alone. Not together. I, I am, am not, not alone. alone. And next yeah. one. I am accepted. Uh, I. Let's uh, together. I, I am uh, accepted. <laughs> And I am chosen. Let's do that one more time. I am chosen. Okay. Last one. I am valued. I am valued. This is just a small list of God's truth about our identities. There's so much more. In our battle, there is nothing more important than knowing Jesus as our Lord and Savior. That is truth. Through Jesus, the battle has already been won because Jesus defeated Satan's hold on us when he died on the cross for our sins, sins and rose again. In that moment, light conquered darkness for all time. That is why it's a it is important for us to read the Bible and put on our belt of truth every day. Now, every piece of the armor of God serves a different purpose to protect you. So you need to put on the full armor of God, just like Ephesians 6.13 says. 
Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground after you have done everything to stand. Now that concludes our lesson today. And we're going to do an activity about how to spot a fake $20 bill. Uh, so we are going to show you some methods using just nothing but what you have. And we're also going to show you some that you need to maybe buy some additional tools like a counterfeit detection pen or a UV flashlight. But first we're going to show you how to do it without any of these tools. So what you're going to want to do, firstly, one thing you can do to tell is there's actually raised ink on the shoulder of the person on the bill. So if you actually feel it with your thumb, you can actually feel the ridges here. And as you can tell over on the smooth paper, there's no ridges. So that's a good way to check that. Um, if there's no ridges on here, that's a good sign that that's just a printed bill, like not a real printed by the mint, but somebody like printed it on their printer at home because they won't have the ability to do that raised ink like that. Number two is to obviously check for a watermark. And the watermark also needs to match the person who is on the bill. And the watermark will occur over here when you hold it up to light. But I'm going to shine some light through the back to kind of simulate this. So as you can see there, there is a watermark of Jackson who is on the $20 bill. And it is the same person. And it's not printed on. As you can only see it, you know, when it's held up to the light. Another thing you can... It's not really a watermark, but you can check it as a watermark is the security thread in the bills also. This is a little hard to see with the light, but right here, if you hold it up to light, you can see it says USA 20. And we're also going to check this with the black light later, so I'll get more into that. But there's a little thread in the bill that says USA 20, and that should say whatever denomination of bill. Obviously for this, it is a $20 bill. And those are just the regular traditional detection methods that you don't need any additional tools. So actually, there's a couple more I'd like to share. Yeah, you can go back to the full um, screen. So if you take your 20 and you see um, that little copper color, there's only one copper color 20 on the corner on the right side when you're facing it up. Mm -hmm. If you hold it at an angle, it actually turns green. Like if you hold it like sideways like this and look at it. It's actually color changing. Look at it from the top. Look at it from the top and then just tilt it, hold it up and then just tilt it away from you. And you can see the color go from copper to green. Oh yeah. But this thing, oh, maybe did it show? Yeah. And then let's see, was there something else? Oh, okay. If you turn to the back, mm -hmm. if you look, turn to the back, if you look really close in this empty space, there are actually little yellow twenties printed on it. Really, really tiny, An unsophisticated way to copy money is to put it on a photocopier. <laughs> actually, this yellow will not transfer. It will not pick up by the printer. Actually, when I was trying to print the lesson today and I had pictures of this in my file, it would not print because you cannot print money. Let's fold our hands, bow our hands. <sighs> Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you so much for your truth. Thank you, God, for um, bringing us out of darkness into your light. And thank you for your amazing truth that brings light to our world. Please help us to put on the belt of truth, your truth every day, and to trust you and your word, God. Help us to value your truth more than Satan's lies. Lord, we thank you, Jesus, for the blood that you shed on the cross and defeated Satan, that he no longer has any power. Lord, I pray that um, you will help us remind us to put on your truths every day and help us to live in a way that pleases you. And please also help us to speak truth to others, speak truth in love to others around us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.